this week's Blizz Pro Weekly, JR forgot to write a summary, so we're just going to talk about some Blizzard shit. Hey guys, welcome to the newest episode of Blizz Pro Weekly. As always, I am your host, Chris the Beard, our noni, right? It's getting down to where you almost can't see my neck at all. Awesome. So, to start off, we've been talking, or we've been seeing recently some comments on our videos asking, you know, why didn't you cover this piece of news or that piece of news? Well, uh, we filmed this on the weekend, and it takes a little while for post-production, so our videos go up, you know, early the next week. Sometimes things will happen in the interim. So from now on, I will do my best, I'll try to get JR on this bandwagon as well, to state our filming date at the top of the video. So, BlizzPro Weekly, today is June 13th. Now... More business. Last year, Rob Pardo left Blizzard. We were all very sad, and now we find out another senior executive has left the company. Chief Operating Officer Paul Sams left Blizzard back in April with no announcement to the media. Now we know why. Because he is the new CEO of Ready at Dawn Studios, best known lately for their, well, fairly shitty game, The Order 1886. Now most of you will recognize Paul Sams as the guy who closes BlizzCon every year. Many others will remember him as having the most ridiculous Blizzard collection known to man, well, maybe outside of JR. His office was filled with tons of Blizzard merchandise and collectibles. Now, there's been a lot of speculation on why Paul Sands left Blizzard after being with the company for over 20 years. Many people believing, you know, the sky is falling since Rob Pardo, Greg Street, and others have recently left. However, Paul Sams wrote it simply because his family made a decision last year to move back to his wife's home state in Texas. It was for his kid to play football there and also to be closer to his daughter, who's just attending college there. It just so happens that the CEO position at Ready at Dawn also opened up. Probably because the order didn't do very well. That's what, kind of what happens. Basically, there's more to someone's life than just working for a company, and just because someone leaves a company doesn't mean the sky is falling. Plus, I can tell you a lot of people at that sort of C-level position, they all eventually want to be CEO. And, you know, nobody wants to just sit around and wait for Mike Morhaime to decide he's going to retire. So, you know, if you want to move up in your career, you have to be proactive about it, and you have to be willing to move and leave places that you love behind. Paul Sams did say that if he didn't think Blizzard could go on without him, he would not have left. In other words, things are just fine. Now, we wish Paul Sams all the best at his new place in life, and we will miss his closing ceremony speeches at BlizzCon. Now, a little further news on Battle.net. If you had 100 friends on Battle.net, especially recently with Blizzard adding more games, then you knew the pain of that limit that Battle.net had, allowing you to only have a maximum of 100 friends. Many people have been asking for an increase, Blizzard is finally delivering this for now. Now, they have doubled the count to a maximum of 200 friends in your friend list. So, if you were capped out and had to turn people down, you can now go add some people on. Let's talk World of Warcraft. Here's the beef. So, a couple weeks ago, we talked about Blizzard's decision to not allow flying in Warlords, or possibly ever again. Now, the community complained, obviously, and created quite the ruckus. Now, this week, Blizzard made an, an official announcement that they will be adding flying back in patch 6.2. Ah, but there's a catch. They still strongly believe that staying on the ground is important for exploration, but they understand players wanting to move around faster while working on things. So to compromise, they're going to make flying in Draenor something that you have to work for. To gain flying, there will be a bunch of achievements that you will need to accomplish first. Now the full list of all those can be found in the show description. So what do you think of this system? Are you happy that flying's back in? Are you mad that Blizzard caved? Do you think it's too much of a pain in the ass to get it done to be able to fly? Let us know down in the comments. Now speaking of patch 6.2, it sounds like we're a bit closer than we thought. The patch is now releasing what is called release candidates, which means the major patch is closing in. However, there was also a blog post about the first Time Walking Dungeon being available on Friday, June 26th. Now with Time Walking not available until patch 6.2, this means more than likely 6.2 will be releasing Tuesday, June 23rd. Now the reference to Time Walking in the blog post was very quickly removed. With that said, something could still go wrong with the release, but it appears internally Blizzard has a plan for June 23rd. That is JR's prediction. Let's talk Heroes of
So last Saturday, shortly after we recorded our show, Blizzard held a small event in the YouTube spaces in Los Angeles. The event was a celebration of the release of Heroes of the Storm, and with it we learned a bit of new information. First off, these next couple months in Heroes will be Diablo themed. This means new hero skins, mounts, and battlegrounds will center around the Diablo franchise. The Butcher was revealed as the next hero, which will be released June 30th. He's a melee assassin whose passive gathers meat from killed minions and heroes, which grants him plus 1% bonus damage for each meat gathered, maxing out at 25%. He has a slowing ability called Hamstring, a uh, lifesteal ability, and finally his ultimate includes pinning players in place or blowing up a furnace beneath him in an area. Now the next thing revealed was the new battleground called Eternal Conflict. Now the left side of the map is heaven, while the right side is hell. Each side has an immortal that spawns in the middle of the map. The object is to kill the other team's immortal while defending your own. Once you kill the immortal, then yours will spawn in the strongest lane and start pushing said lane. Now the life left on your immortal during the earlier phase is what determines how far that immortal can push. Now once this is over, the fight between the immortals starts all over again. Now the map has similarities to the Haunted Mines, uh, except instead of two bosses pushing lanes, only one will, depending on who wins that earlier fight. Now with more content coming out in Heroes and E3 scheduled next week, Blizzard, believe it or not, will be represented at E3 during the PC Gaming Conference hosted by Day9. While there, they have plans to reveal more content coming to Heroes, one of it which is probably the reveal of the Skeleton King hero that should be coming out after Butcher. StarCraft Legacy of the Void will also be discussed. It does not at this point look like any other Blizzard games will be present. Not even Overwatch, as many had speculated. Alright, let's finish up with some Hearthstone. Pull up a chair by the hearth. So this week, Blizzard released new information on a new game mode coming to Hearthstone. Now, we have all noticed, you know, in that opening screen, there's three buttons, and it looks like there's space for a fourth. Well, now we know what that fourth will be. It will lead us to what Blizzard is calling Tavern Brawls. A Tavern Brawls will be a special type of gameplay with different rules each week. Kind of similar to the Challenge Stone tournament we talked about a couple weeks ago. Some really funky rules, funky ways to play. Tavern Brawls will be free, at least at first. You can challenge your friends or just play other random people. And the first Tavern Brawl you win each week, at least for a while, once again, will award you a classic card pack. Tavern Brawls, along with the rest of this patch, are expected to release sometime mid-June, so fairly quickly here. And with things getting data mined at a pretty good clip, we expect these changes to hit sometime next week. Now, along with this new patch will also be a cardback collection manager. Now you will be able to assign specific cardbacks to specific decks. Just go into your card collection manager, and you'll have the option to select cardbacks for decks you have already created. Speaking of cardbacks, it appears a new card back is coming into the game, and it signifies what could possibly be the first exclusive card back based on the type of device you're using. Now, it was data mined this week that there will be a new Galaxy card back. No details given at this point, it was just data mined uh, as far as you know how it will be awarded, but it almost certainly has to do with if you are playing or own Hearthstone on a Samsung Galaxy device. Now, finally, the other Hero Editions added to this patch have been revealed. A couple more alternates. Now the last week we talked about the new warrior Magni Bronzebeard and now we have two more that we'll be releasing with this patch. Hunter and Maid will be getting new alt heroes in the form of Ilaria Windrunner for Hunter and Medivh for the Mage. Now these new alternate heroes will have animated portraits, new emotes, new hero animations, and again are just cosmetic in nature. They're just aesthetic. They don't actually give you any sort of advantage. They will cost $9.99 per hero and each hero will come with their own new card back as well. Now, there do not appear to be any plans at this point for some sort of a bundle with all these various alt heroes. Now, you will be able to assign the new alt heroes as your favorites in the collection manager much like you will be able to start doing with card backs. So that does it for Hearthstone and our video this week. Subscribe right here, YouTube, iTunes, give us a thumbs up, a star rating, all that good stuff. Check out all of our shows on BlizzPro TV. You want to listen and subscribe to Westmarch Workshop, Hearthstone Power Hour, Heroes Power Hour, and Real Life Respec. 
Me, I'm all over the internet. Twitter, Facebook, I'm a Goodreads author. My first novel, The Lost and Broken Realm, is available online pretty much everywhere. Uh, I'm also a contributor for bookriot.com and panels.net. If you have a question, email us at askthebeard at blizzpro.com. And of course, check out blizzpro.com. We've got all the news, reviews, interviews, everything you need to know about Blizzard Entertainment Games. Stay beardy, my friends. <laughs>